<laughs> You're so silly. Okay. You have to edit this or something. Of course. What's up, everybody? It's Angela. And Lamar. And we are here today at our kitchen table, and we need you to solve an argument. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! As you know, we are embarking upon a brand new move, and we are moving to Mexico. And in less than 90 days, we will be packing up everything that we have. Well, not everything that we have. <laughs> and moving our three kids and our two dogs with us to Mexico. <laughs> You're supposed to say something after that. What? The question right now is... Which way would be the best way to go? There are two options that are in front of us right now. One is the option of simply driving all the way to Mexico with our minivan and kids and dogs in tow. Or, or transporting the van to Houston and we fly to Houston and pick the van up and then drive from Houston to Mexico. Okay, so we need y'all to help us solve this discussion, this debate on the pros and the cons on both of the options. We want to present to you right now what we're working with and kind of get your feedback because honestly, there are pros and cons to both sides. Right. So why don't you tell me why we should fly and drive? First of all, how much is that gonna cost? Well. The transport the van will be approximately a thousand dollars from uh, the Maryland Washington DC area down to Texas. Um, airfare would be thirteen hundred dollars for all of us. Um, one overnight in an Airbnb if needed, uh, and then four hundred ninety six mile drive to Queretaro um, at approximately three dollars and 25 cents a gallon on the gas so the gas would be you know 71 dollars 72 dollars mm -hmm. um, hotel stay in monterey 75 dollars and tolls about 50 dollars so with a grand total of two thousand six hundred forty six dollars and fifty cents and this would take approximately two days um uh, and then we would also have to purchase uh, car insurance uh, for the van once we, for Mexican car insurance once we get into Mexico. Right. So I think either way, we're going to have to make sure we have some Mexican car insurance. That's a given. However, on the side of team drive, I think that in estimating how long it would take us to drive from the Maryland, Washington, D.C. area, driving down through um, Tennessee, down to New Orleans, then from New Orleans to Houston, Houston to the border, and then the border to Monterey, Mexico, which is one of the first stops that we would probably make for overnight, and then Monterey into Queretaro. Now, mind you, this is always driving during the day and making sure that we're not driving more than eight hours at a time because, honestly... That's a lot of driving. That is a lot of driving. Way too much. Yes. Okay, so what I have calculated is that gas would probably run us, more than likely it's going to run us about $354 or so. Guestimating that gas might be around $3.25 by then. Hopefully gas will be lower. lower I mean, but much lower. These gas prices these days, y'all. Mm -hmm. All right, so then we have to probably stop and get some food along the way. Mm -hmm. That would be a, probably about $400 for the, a family of four. Um, our oldest is not going to be in the car with us driving. She's not about that life. So it's just going to be me, Lamar, 
and our two younger ones, the teenagers, and our two dogs. Then we figure we need to have some snacks in the car because you know how your son eat. Yeah, well, I mean, that's snacks, my son too, but snacks to go along with the movies as they watch as we drive. Yes, and our son can't eat. Mm. He's a teenager, right. so I, I factored thirty dollars, but probably more because he <laughs> eats when he's bored. <laughs> Then um, factoring four nights of a hotel stay. So that's one night in perhaps Tennessee, either Knoxville or Chattanooga, one night in uh, New Orleans, Mm -hmm. then a night in Houston, and then one night in Monterey. So that's four nights of a hotel stay. We're approximately estimating maybe about $470 for that. Um, I factored in about $100 worth of tolls, but... Realistically, it could be about a hundred or two hundred dollars worth of Mexican total tolls and American tolls, and I threw in a hundred dollars of some miscellaneous as well. So that grand total, if I were to just calculate about a hundred dollars worth of tolls, the whole thing to drive from the D.C. area to Querétaro is one thousand four hundred and fifty-four dollars. Mm-hmm. So. Here's the deal. We now have to start looking at the pros and cons of both. And so I've got my little nice little note. Do you have your note? No, I don't have any notes. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I do have notes. (laughs) Okay. So what are the pros? And I'll give you the cons for you driving and flying to Mexico. So the pro, one of the pros is a shorter overall travel time. Instead of four days, it would be about it would be two dot two days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, decrease travel risk, meaning that on the road, you know, as drivers we could make a mistake, but moreover, there are other drivers on the road that could make mistakes and possibly have an accident. So right. that would reduce the risk of the traveling if we take it from four days to two. Mm-hmm. Um, less wear and tear on the van. Um, so um, even though we're going to make sure that uh, things are taken care of as far as checking hoses, belts, you know, oil changes, that kind of stuff, making sure the van is in good shape, you know, tires, that whole shooting, that whole thing. Um, but still, you know, less wear and tear on the van. Um, right. Less tolls in the U.S. driving, uh, reduce meal needs. So, you know, less costs for uh, meals and reduce lodging needs. So that, you know. That definitely will will make a difference, although it's a thousand about a little over a thousand dollars more as far Which as extra costs. Brings me to the cons. So it is. It's more expensive to drive and fly than it is just to simply drive. Right. So that's one con, and then um, it requires a whole lot of logistics planning. Right. So we're going. We would have to make sure that we've gotten hotel accommodations that, or rather, the accommodations to ship the car, the van, from the D.C. area all the way down to Houston and then make sure that we arrive there right at the time that the car is being delivered. Right. And then, Lord knows, if they, something happens to the van, that's a possibility, too. So this just seems like there's a lot more logistics planning in terms of driving and flying. And then not to mention having to book air flights and all that, one-way right. tickets, For us to be able to get down there. Right. Mm -hmm. And if we fly, we also have to fly with dogs. Yeah. Ain't nobody got time for that with dogs. And and Lucky is a senior dog at that. Yeah, yeah. So so those are my cons for your idea. So let me give you the pros for driving. If we drive, Mm -hmm. the opportunity for... The scenic road trip abounds. We could have a, a scenic trip with the mm-hmm. kids. The kids might want to see America. Mm-hmm. They haven't been to New Orleans and they've never been to Houston. So that might be that. Mm-hmm. And then the next pro is that it's less expensive. It's not as expensive to drive ourselves as it is to fly right. and drive. Um, more comfortable. Mm-hmm. Our van is pretty comfortable. Yeah, it's comfortable. We have yeah, a nice van. Sure. It's, it's you know nice and comfortable. 
Um, it doesn't require as much logistics planning, although making sure we stop at hotels that are dog friendly could be right. a, a con, but I'll give you that. Um, but it does allow us some flexibility in the planning because if we wanted to go on a certain day or if we're, we change our minds about leaving on, say, a Tuesday and decide right. to leave on a on a Monday, we don't have to cancel reservations and flights and all that kind of stuff. True. So, what are the cons for you? Mm. Takes longer. Yeah. That's a long drive. Yeah. Very long drive. Four days. It's 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 quite a bit of a drive. And it's just us uh, driving, and you driving. Driving. Because these kids, they got no license No, yet. they don't have a license, no learners, nothing. <gasps> no experience whatsoever. So they would be basically useless behind the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Dag, daddy. Uh, you do have the increased travel risk, uh, being on the road eight hours a day. Uh, fatigue would set in, yeah. um, and then other drivers out there, unless we, you know, catch, you know, non rush hour um, through, especially through major cities. Yeah, um, and, the, and the van could break down. Yes, the van could break down. Yeah, which is a risk to our side too, but yeah, greater risk on our. Um, more tolls in the U.S. and in, well, added as far as Mexico. True. Um, and, True. you know, so that, that would add to it. So, um, uh, I mean, we're trying to weigh this out so that we can make the best decision. Yeah. Um, figure out what we're going to do. Right. Um, uh, the kids actually want to drive. Yeah. They, they see it as being fun, but of course... They're not driving. They're uh, yeah, sleeping, true. Sleeping, yeah. eating, and wa- and watching movies. That is the truth. That is the truth. So you know that's that's not a big deal for them. They they don't have to do anything except for sit back and relax. Now, for both of us, it is not our necessarily our big thing to drive. Although Lamar's a better long distance driver than I am, mm-hmm. per se. Yeah. <laughs> that's still a long drive that I is mean, a long drive it's a long drive eight hours each day is a long drive, drive. That's, that's a lot of driving that is a lot of driving <sighs> so what to do what to do yeah what do you guys think yeah. should we fly and then drive the rest of the way in or, or should we just drive the whole way. way why don't you guys help us figure this one out yep like this video leave a comment down below on what you think we should do. Yeah. Yeah? Yep. All right. All right. Bye. See ya.